This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the function and the problems associated with a condensate trap. So how it works, when it's needed, if it's needed on a furnace and air conditioning system, air handler and air conditioning system, or a mini split unit. So on an air handler, we have the air being pulled across the evaporator coil. So this is where the coil is. And so it's being pulled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this so that you can see uh, the air being pulled in. And just so you know, this is called a P-trap. This is called a U-trap. And for all you HVAC nerds out there, we are also measuring our airflow and we're gonna determine the amount of cubic feet per minute that we're pulling in here when we don't have a trap. But the whole point of this is on air handlers, you always need a water trap. I'm gonna show you why. Here we have a clear U-trap and there's no water inside. So we're gonna turn the system on and we're gonna do some tests right here. So you can see it's pulling the air in And you can see we're measuring right about 700 feet per minute. So that's not cubic feet per minute, that's just an air velocity of feet per minute. So we'll just use the number of about 700. After doing our calculations, you see that we're pulling about four CFMs of air volume into the system through the condensate line. Now we're gonna turn this system off. Now we're gonna pour some water in here to add the water weight in the trap. And now we're also going to mark the level of the water. We'll put our cap back on. And turn the system back on. As you can tell, nothing's happening right here. You can see our water has risen, looks to be just a little bit higher than a quarter inch. And you can also see that we're registering zero feet per minute. And the other thing I wanna show you is our static pressure that we're reading in the return duct is 0.32 inches water column. Well, 0.3 inches of water column is about the same height as right here, right? So you have to have water weight in here in order to combat the static pressure of a ducted system in order to allow the water to drain out of the condensate pan, out of the condensate line. This is what it looks like for an air handler condensate pan to fill up with water and not be able to drain because there's no condensate trap. Now the system's off so you have all of your water getting drained out. Our water height is now high again and I'm going to add this trap and this trap has water right in the bottom here. So we're gonna go ahead and see what happens. So now it's allowing all the condensate in this pan to drain out properly. So that's how the condensate trap works. So on a ducted air handler, you definitely are gonna need some type of a trap. And this is a U-trap, and this has enough height to overcome most of any type of friction that you're gonna be measuring in your inches of water column there. If you're using a P-trap, you just gotta make sure that the static pressure is on the lower end. You could even use a dry trap such as this one right here. So let's just show you that. So the system is running. And you can see that we're measuring zero feet per minute and we still have about the same static pressure at 0.3 inches of water column. So there's a little ball in there and it just gets sucked up to the hole. And then the water can trickle out around it. And so this works in applications where you uh, have a problem with maybe freezing, like the water freezing in the condensate line. And this trap is also used in replacement of a normal one that may dry out during heating mode because this trap's not gonna let any air through. Now we're moving over to the evaporator coil and this gas furnace right here. And so we have the airflow coming up this way. And so this is gonna be at positive pressure. And so when we turn this on, it's gonna be pushing air out in this situation. Now we're gonna turn the system on. So 
So you can see the velocity of the air exiting through the condensate line is about 900 feet per minute. After doing our calculations, we see that we have about 5.31 cubic feet per minute of air exiting through the condensate line on this furnace and air conditioning system. Now we're going to add our water in. And now we're going to mark it. And now we're going to turn the power on to the system so that the blower motor turns on. And so you can see our positive pressure that's coming through the condensate line is pushing our water weight down a little bit more than a quarter inch. And on this side it's up a little bit higher than about a quarter inch. And so I actually have a static pressure tip and my water commonometer presently reading 0.32 inches of water column. And that's a positive pressure. And so the only reason that you would put a trap on a furnace and air conditioning system A coil is just to not lose the air that would be getting pushed out of the system to the outside of the building. If this was draining on the inside of the building, then there definitely would be no need in order to have a trap there. Uh, but you are losing 5 CFM, in this case 5 CFM, but you know in another case it might be 2 CFM, it might be 5 CFM, it might be 10 CFM, it depends on the system static pressure and the uh, air volume uh, but the whole point of this is that you don't need to have a trap on a furnace and a coil so it's just going to be something that ends up clogging over time if you are really good about your preventative maintenance and it's not a big deal then yeah you can put the trap in but if you're going to be just installing this and kind of leaving it that's going to be an issue and you're going to have a point in time where this condensate trap will end up clogging and the paint inside of here is going to overflow and cause water damage down the inside of your furnace and down below this furnace. Another thing that you could do is without a trap, you could just pipe it straight over into a condensate pump and that would be a water trap in and of itself. You just got to make sure that the condensate tube is close to the bottom of the pump and usually you can cut it in an unsquare fashion to make sure that you're, you're not sandwiching this condensate line against the bottom of the condensate pump. Here we have our indoor wall mounted mini split unit and we're going to turn the power on and so here we go and we're going to turn the fan speed up to its highest amount. And let's take our rotating vein anemometer and we're going to set that right in there and it's not going to be exact because it's you know over here with a PVC pipe. So you can see it's around 300 feet per minute right there. Now let's go out to the outdoor unit and we're going to measure our velocity on the condensate line. So now we're on the outside of the building and the condensate line comes down the exterior wall with the line set down below the outdoor unit below the deck right there. So as you can see, even with our indoor unit at its highest fan speed, our rotating vane anemometer is not even spinning. And so we're reading zero feet per minute on the outdoor condensate line. So you really don't have to have a trap in order for the water to drain out because you don't have to deal with the static pressure from a duct. Remember these indoor wall mounted units are ductless units. And so no trap is required. If you were really concerned about maybe bugs or something like that, you could put on a dry trap such as that or something such as this right here. Uh, but really you're asking for trouble anytime you add anything onto the system, especially uh, something like this, which is a, a large water trap. And so this is going to end up clogging over time and causing a big problem. And so you don't need to have a trap on a wall-mounted ductless unit. Just make sure that wherever the condensate's dripping at, it's in a safe location. So as you can tell, on a mini-split condensate line, you don't have to have a trap because it doesn't have to deal with the static pressure that a ducted system would deal with. And so on an air handler, we have, say, negative pressure or a vacuum. It's actually a reduction in pressure compared to atmospheric pressure. You're going to have to have a trap here, otherwise the water is just going to build up in the pan and it's going to overflow. In the case of a gas furnace and an evaporator coil for air conditioning, you don't have to have a trap. But just realize that you're going to be losing air out of this condensate line, especially you know, if you have it outside. You're going to have an air exchange between your inside of the building and the outside, unless you have some type of a, a water trap or a dry trap, or you have this condensate line down into the bottom of a condensate pump. 
So I hope this video helped clear that up. And if you're looking for more resources on HVAC, make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we've got quizzes, we've got articles, we've got calculators, we've got quick tips. And we also have a refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. So hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.